in the name of Jesus. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. You see that regularly, don't you? At school, in your social media feeds, your news apps, with your friends, maybe even on your sports teams. Those questions about your faith that sometimes pop up. Do you really believe that all that stuff in the Bible about Jesus is true? How can you belong to a religion that's been so oppressive throughout history? What do you mean you don't approve of, insert social justice movement of the day here, And then, like the Israelites of Elijah's time, you start to wonder. You start to doubt. You don't see your Lord and God being active and hands-on in your life. Sure, you go to church. You wear your crucifix. You do your devotions. Sometimes. You're active in your youth group. But Almighty God still seems silent. And other voices start to pull on you. Other religions may start to sound attractive. The people that you know who flout God's law and live in sin don't seem to be bad people. Can they really be bound for hell, even when they're so nice? How do you reconcile that with what God's law says about those who turn away from him, those for whom sin isn't something to run away from, but simply another way to live their lives? Signs. Wonders and wisdom, that's what the world seeks. How may I live my life in the way that I am fulfilled? How can I have it all? Whatever it takes, whatever religions I have to blend together or lack of religion, I'll make my own way to find happiness. No. The world outside these walls and the walls of your home congregations doesn't care about you and your faith. They don't want to hear about it, especially if it speaks contrary to their own self-actualization. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. In the midst of a world that couldn't care less about your confession of faith, you are called to stand firm and steadfast in the Word of God and confess Christ crucified for your sin and for the sin of the world. Because this is the only way. Jesus Christ and Him crucified is the only way and the only truth. We preach Christ crucified, which is folly to the Gentiles. It is absurd to the world outside that we insist on dead Jesus on his cross. It is ludicrous to those outside of the faith that we hold this image in such high regard. But Christ crucified is the very center and source and existence of your faith, is he not? The truth of this work of Christ for you is everything. 
that your almighty Lord and God would set aside his power and his glory to take on your flesh is mind-boggling. That he would then condescend to die in your place for your faults is scandalous especially in our world today, where there are still hints of that old pull-yourself-up-by-your-bootstraps mentality, it is offensive to think that this is all gift, that this death which brings life is not earned. But that's what our Lutheran forefathers were willing to die for, wasn't it? That's why Dr. Luther and the confessor stood before hostile audiences to proclaim the truth of this very image, Christ crucified for all, for everyone, for you. And that's the ironic beauty of our Lord's sacrifice, that in the moment of his greatest weakness, Christ Jesus was at his most powerful, destroying the power of sin and death and the devil for all time as he submitted to the authorities and to his cross. St. Paul says that our Lord God chose what is weak, what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God shows what is weak in the world to shame the strong, and he did. This simple truth of Jesus for you is the hardest concept for the unbelieving world to understand. It is impossible to grasp without faith that salvation doesn't depend on you. Your Lord Christ dying for your sin is true whether you want it to be or not. Your Lord Christ dying for your sin is true, whether you feel forgiven or not. So boldly stand and confess your faith in this world that so badly needs Christ Jesus. No, it's not about you. It is only about Jesus for you. As St. Paul says, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. After all, our Lord Jesus is the very reason you are here today. He has drowned and raised you to life in the waters of your baptism. He feeds you at his holy table, and he teaches you his holy word. Because of the Father, you are in Christ Jesus. And that is the safest place to be forever. Amen.